Over the past two years, vitamin D has gotten a lot of airtime, but what about vitamin A, specifically as it relates to immunology and immune health and how to change your body's immune system response to tolerate various environmental antigens, allergies, and to protect yourself should you get exposed to a pathogen like a virus or a bacteria? Well, it turns out that vitamin A is as much or even more protective when compared to vitamin D. Going back to the 1900s, researchers and doctors have been utilizing vitamin A for children suffering from measles outbreaks and measles infections because vitamin A helps to influence the interferons like interferon gamma and the release and the maintenance of various immune cells. So we're going to talk a little bit more about retinoic acid, retinol, and vitamin A. It's really exciting. Uh, this has been widely discussed. So let's break down the title. Megadoses of retinol, a possible immunomodulation in COVID-19 illness in resource-limited settings. So I think this is important because there's a lot of people that don't have the different tools and strategies and things like that. We know during the cold and flu season, what can we do to help support their innate and adaptive immune system to make them more resilient? So let's dive into what vitamin A is, what it does, and how it might be helpful. As I mentioned, retinol or retinoic acid uh, and retinal are all the different types, or there's three different forms of vitamin A. When you get dietary supplements, whether it's cod liver oil, whether it's vitamin A extracted from cod liver oil, or just retinoic acid, those are primarily the forms that you're getting uh, it in. And uh, retinoic acid is the most bioactive form. And so when you also eat vitamin A rich foods, whether it's liver, uh, also carrots uh, are uh, rich in, in vitamin A. I'm sure there's a whole list of other foods, but those come to mind. And what we like to do is uh, I'll just pause here before we talk about all the benefits and the mechanisms in that. We go to this European deli uh, that's, that's in my neighborhood. A lot of Russians and Eastern Europeans go there and they have fresh cod liver, literally the liver of cod packaged, you know, kind of wrapped for you, uh, not in cans or BPA lined cans or things. And just once a week, that's what we'll have. And it, it doesn't taste bad at all. It's not like liver uh, from lamb or beef or chicken. Uh, it's very mild. And so that does have a lot of uh, retinoic acid and, and retinol. So uh, consider consuming more liver uh, in your diet. But one of the main ways that vitamin A is helpful is that it helps to induce immune tolerance. And I wanna just sort of pause and talk about what immune tolerance is and why it's helpful. So let's just go back to your elementary school when you had a substitute teacher who was really sort of stressed out, like new classroom, there's like a class clown, there's all these stresses, they, they don't you know have tolerance. Or if you're a parent yourself, right, you know sometimes you lose your patience. Well, think about tolerance in the same way in your immune system as we think about patients as a parent or a teacher. When you lose your patients, you start overreacting to things that ordinarily you wouldn't react to. Your immune system has patients as well, but it's called tolerance, immunologic tolerance. So when your immune system loses tolerance, it starts overreacting to things it shouldn't, like your own cells. Autoimmune thyroid disease is an overreactive or loss of tolerance that is destroying the thyroid gland. If we think about rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, lupus, scleroderma, every autoimmune disease, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's colitis, they are characterized by loss of tolerance. The immune system is overreacting to tissues that it shouldn't. So how can we restore tolerance so that your immune system doesn't perceive your own self tissues as being problematic? Vitamin A helps there. So anyone who has allergies, atopy, skin issues, uh, eczema, psoriasis, or systemic autoimmune uh, disease could benefit from taking vitamin A, both from foods and potentially supplements. So I think that's one of the main mechanisms here uh, as sort of chronic use of low doses of vitamin A, 5,000 IUs a day, up to 10,000. Now, in acute situations where you think you might have contracted an illness or a pathogen or been exposed and you want to ramp up interferon activity, interferon gamma, you can do short-term what's known as supraphysiologic levels of retinoic acid or retinol. So that might look like, I know this sounds like a lot, and again, for the YouTube oligarchs here, we're, we're not diagnosing, treating, curing, or preventing, we're giving medical advice here. This is just actually what scientists talked about in this article. And pregnant women, please do not take superphysiologic levels of vitamin A. Uh, it, it can be uh, teratogenic, so we want to consider that. But around 100,000 to 200,000 IUs for several days acutely if there is concern over a pathogen infection. Various studies over the years have looked at this. Again, going back to 19, I think 1919 was one of the first studies on that. Uh, now, 
Before we continue on, friends, I just want to pause and, and thank you for being here. It's Mike Mutzel. Uh, if you're enjoying this content, please share this with a friend or family member. Hit that like button and leave us a comment. That goes a long way. We're going to continue on here and talk about uh, retinoic acid and retinol and vitamin A and why I think it should be something that should be on your radar. I'll put links to resources uh, below. But let's focus here on figure one. Uh, what you're seeing here is, is retinoic acid. Uh, also, that, that's the most bioactive compound in, in vitamin A. And what it's doing is it's favorably impacting all sorts of parameters of immune health that induce immune tolerance. Remember, people that have allergies, autoimmunity, chronic inflammation, there's generally a characterization of loss of immune tolerance and the immune system is overreacting and creating collateral damage to self tissues. And retinoic acid helps to quell that. Uh, partly how it does this is by increasing the activity of the T regulatory cells We've talked a lot about this before, but just as a quick recap, you know, you have various aminologic cells, particularly in your, in your T lymphocyte repertoire. The T regulatory cells help to pull back the unrestrained inflammation and aggression, essentially, uh, you know, towards self tissues. So who might have a dearth or a lack of healthy T regulatory cells? People that are overweight, people that are obese, people that have increased level of visceral adiposity, because it turns out that leptin, is one of these hormones that's released from fat tissue that suppresses the functional activity of the T regulatory cells. And so you can get this loss of immune tolerance by having a metabolic disease. We've talked a lot before about immunometabolism. So you can see here, if you have a metabolic disorder where you have obesity, you have insulin resistance, you have all of this, then you can manifest immunologic disease like allergies, autoimmunity, cancer, uh, in, increase susceptibility to severe infections because you, have, because you have this metabolic disease, because the hormone leptin is both involved in metabolism and immunologic regulation. So what, what's the solution? Well, of course, you got to work on exercise, you know, fasting, compressing your feeding window, eating real food. But on a micronutrient perspective, you could benefit from things like vitamin D and vitamin A because they both help to induce immune tolerance by priming the T regulatory cells, by helping this critical cell type so that when your thyroid is getting destroyed by your own immune system, those T reg cells can say, hey, time out. Why are you destroying the thyroid? This is friendly fire. This is our own gland. We, we don't want to destroy this. We want to focus our energies on pa invading pathogens, right? So T regulatory cells help to do that and bringing it back to vitamin A, retinoic acid helps to prime the T regulatory cells, uh, in addition to uh, the, the uh, interferon released in the innate immune system. So uh, I just want to read you just, you know, just a few quick quotes here because I think it's uh, important as we continue on here. To summarize, retinoic acid balances the differentiation of T helper cell subsets to maintain immune homeostasis. That's a more eloquent way of talking about what I just mentioned here with pivoting uh, the pendulum more towards immune balance with the uh, T regulatory cells. And let's finish off with mucosal immunity. This is really important, uh, especially now during sort of the endemic phase of this, of this uh, pandemic. Uh, mucosal immunity hasn't really been focused on uh, because you know, we didn't have a tool to support mucosal immunity. And what is this mucosal immunity? It's the uh, immuno immunoglobulin antibodies and T cells that are in the mucous membranes of the nose, of the lungs, of the saliva, and of the gastrointestinal tract. And vitamin A helps to prime those various immune cells that are so important for the mucosal memory uh, and part of the immunity. So it's important to recognize going forward, you know, you might get pathogens in your nose, uh, in your saliva, in your airway. And it's that immune system, the mucosal immune system, that is so important for providing that front line of defense, should you get exposed to sort of, you know, help to quell and or prevent that pathogen from materializing into something systemically problematic. And your mucosal immune system uh, is highly influenced by these fat soluble immunologic supporting uh, micronutrients, vitamin A and vitamin D. So in, in closing, if you take vitamin D, a lot of you do, a lot of you are so excited. I've seen your comments. My levels are at 60. My levels are at 90. I take 10,000. I use a day. I've seen a million and one comments. Everyone is so excited. Please share your excitement for the associated vitamin. Um, that's retinol, vitamin A. 
It's very important for immune health. In fact, the retinoic acid receptor is very close to the vitamin D receptor and the genes and the co-activating, there's all these complex molecular biologic signaling pathways. They are shared, they are uh, related, and we should be considering both. So support your retinol, support your retinoic acid from a dietary standpoint, and you might want to uh, consider it you know, acute superphysiologic levels if you're not a pregnant woman. If you get exposed to a pathogen or you want to uh, see what it might do for your allergies. I have friends now as we get closer to spring, they're starting to get more allergies. You know, this could be something to consider you know, because, again, it, it helps to prime those T regulatory cells. So, friends, uh, hopefully you enjoy this video. I will link this article. It was free on the Internet. You can check it out. And... Put, put vitamin A on your radar. Start to, start to you know, do more research into vitamin A rich foods and incorporate those into your diet and see what they might do for your life and your health. As always, I appreciate you subscribing. Thank you for sharing this video and we will catch you on a future one down the road. Bye now. Yeah.